Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today's lesson is about polynomials. We're going to learn what a polynomial is for all those curious learners out there. Let's go ahead and learn about polynomials. First off, the smallest polynomial is a special kind of polynomial. We call this a monomial. Mono means one. And that is the smallest type of polynomial. And it's special because we're going to learn about the monomial. And then later on, it'll be easier to combine together several monomials to make larger polynomials. So a monomial is either a number, a variable, or a product of a number and one or more variables. So it's one of three things, either a number, a letter, or a number and a letter together, or several letters. Let's look at some examples of monomials. Here's one, 2x. It's the number 2 and the letter x, or the variable x. And it's the product of those two. So 2x is an example of a monomial. Here's another one, ab. It's the letter a and b. Those are the product of those two variables. Here's another one, 3b. Notice the number can change, doesn't matter. The variable can change, it's still a monomial. 17p, very similar example. We can have negative numbers like negative 12mn. mn is two variables together with a negative number, still a monomial. We have the letter y all by itself, that's a monomial. The number 4 completely by itself. That's a monomial as well. It's a one term that's either a number, a letter, or a combination of them. Four-fifths, this is a fraction. Fraction is a number. So a number like that, four-fifths, is still considered a monomial. The letter x, that's probably our most famous variable, most infamous. We're always trying to figure out what it means. All right, negative 7a. And our final example, 5 sixths t, 5 six times t, a number times a letter. Again, these are all examples of monomials, single terms with letters and numbers and some kind of combination of them. Now, there are some rules about what you can and can't do inside of monomials, and most of those rules revolve around the exponents. So next we're going to talk about exponents. Notice that none of these have any exponents that we can see. So let's talk about exponents. Monomials can only have whole number exponents. So the exponents cannot be fractions, they cannot be negative numbers, and they also, this is kind of an interesting one, they can't be in the denominator. If you know rules of exponents, um, the second and third one there are kind of the same. Exponents that are in the denominator are actually the same as negative exponents. So if you, if you are familiar with rules of exponents, you know that. And, and so that's kind of a special rule um, that you can't have a whole number exponent even even if it's a whole number, it can't be in the denominator. All right, let's look at some monomials that have exponents. Let's take a look at them. Here's an example, negative 5x to the power of 5. Positive whole number exponent. Notice that the initial term, negative 5, the coefficient, that can be negative, that's fine. It's the exponent that we're focusing on. p to the power of 8. 8 is a positive whole number, you're in good shape x squared, y squared. That is another example of a monomial. That's one really big term, 14x squared, y squared. But all of the exponents are positive numbers. x squared, very common, and 3ab squared. Notice that the, the numbers, um, the, the exponent number doesn't really matter, and um, the exponent can go on any variable. And those are just some examples of monomials with exponents. Now, there are two exponents that we have not addressed. And that's the exponent, um, one of them is something to the power of 1. x to the power of 1 is the same thing as x. 
So we're not going to write 1 as an exponent. That's just um, something to be aware of, though. It does have an exponent of 1. We just don't write it in there. So that would be considered just writing it as itself. So an example, 5a to the power of 1, we would just write it as 5a. So you need to remember that that's an exponent. That's going to be important with future polynomials but and, and future lessons. But it's not going to be really important today. Just keep that in mind that that x to the power of 1 is, an, is a whole number exponent, but we're not going to write it. The other one that we're not really going to talk about too much is x to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So we're not going to write 0 as an exponent. Here's an example. 3a to the power of 0 means 3 times 1. So we'll just write it as 3. So all numbers, technically we can say they have exponents, but all numbers are just going to be written as a number. They're not going to be written as any, any exponent value. So let's go back to our list. This is our list of um, variables and numbers and variables with exponents. We can actually add negative 12y to that list because it has an exponent of 1. We could also add the number 11 to that list because it's like 11 times a variable to the power of 0. So just keeping that in mind, and again, that's more for future reference when we're working with um, more complicated polynomials. Um, it's a good thing to know that if you do have 12 to the power of, or 12y, it implies that it's to the power of 1. All right. Now, let's change gears a little bit and talk about non-monomials, things that are not monomials. We talked about these rules, but I want to show you some examples. Here's one, 5 over y to the power of 5. This one is a non-monomial because the number ends in the denominator. Notice we have a variable with an exponent in the denominator. That is not a monomial. Another example, x to the power of negative 2. x to the power of negative 2 is also not a monomial. And our final non-example or example of a non-monomial is a to the power of 1 half. Although that's a positive number, 1 half, it is not an acceptable monomial. So we need to keep those in mind when we're moving forward. So not everything you can write down with numbers and letters is a polynomial, but most things are as long as they don't kind of fit into these categories of negative exponents, fraction exponents, or um, variables with exponents in the denominator, things like that, variables in the denominator at all. So let's take a moment. Um, in in the curious um, world, it's difficult to write exponents. So I've actually created these these problems to be on a slide. So what you'll do is look at this question, pause the recording, and then you'll have the opportunity to go ahead and select an answer choice A, B, C, or D. Which of these is not a monomial? When you've completed the question and selected your answer you can go ahead and continue with the lesson. All right, so we've talked about monomials. Now we're going to talk about polynomials. Polynomials are one or more monomials connected together. So a monomial is the smallest type of polynomial. In, and they are connected together using addition or subtraction. Here's an example. 2x plus 3y, that is a polynomial. It's a polynomial with two terms. 2x is the first term, 3y is the, the final term, and they are connected using that addition symbol. All right, so there are two monomial terms connected using addition. Not bad, polynomials aren't so bad. You have to remember though, if any one of the terms is not a monomial, like it has a negative exponent or a fraction exponent, then it can't be a polynomial. All the terms have to be monomials. They have to follow those rules that we talked about. All right, let's move forward and take a look at some polynomials. Here's one, 2x plus 3y. 
That looks kind of familiar, right? 5x squared plus 3x minus 15. There's an example of a polynomial with three terms in it, all positive exponents. 3 quarters x plus 9. That is, again, an example of a polynomial. Th a to the power of 3 plus b and 7a minus 2. Here are just some examples of polynomials. Numbers and letters combined together into terms that we call monomials, and then several monomials connected together using addition and subtraction. Now it's time again for another question. Go ahead and um, look at the quiz and select your answer. All right, names of common polynomials. Near the end of this lesson, we are going to talk about different types of polynomials. And, and we're just going to talk about common names of polynomials based on the number of terms that are in them, the name, and just give you a quick example. So we spent a lot of time today talking about one-term polynomials. One-term polynomials are called, called monomials. And here's an example, 2x to the power of 2. We shared lots of examples of monomials throughout this lesson. Here's just one example for you. The next one is, if it has two terms in it, it's called a binomial. And here's an example, 3x plus 7y. We also had several examples throughout our lesson of different binomials. Two terms connected together using addition or subtraction. Um, binomial. And the last one, a trinomial has three terms, like this example, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Three separate monomials connected with addition or subtraction. Uh, I know I used all addition in these examples, but we've used examples throughout the lesson with lots of subtraction as well. So here are some examples. Now, are there terms for or names for polynomials that have four terms, five terms, six terms, seven terms, sure, there are. But these are the common names that you'll actually hear. Usually when it goes beyond four terms, you, it's just referred to as a polynomial. All right? So you don't really have to know those other term um, terminologies, the names. You'll hear them maybe in a higher level math class, but you'll very rarely hear the, anything beyond a trinomial ever mentioned. Um, after that point, they're just referred to as polynomials. So those are good terms to be aware of. Four things to remember <clears throat> at the end of our lesson. Number one, polynomials have numbers, variables, or a product of both. Number two, polynomials exponents are whole numbers, not fractions or negatives. Polynomial variables are never in the denominator. You don't have the variables in the denominator. And polynomials are not hungry birds. Get it? Polynomial. <laughs> All right, that was ridiculous. Anyway, hope you did enjoy this lesson and it was helpful for you in learning what a polynomial is and what a polynomial is not. Have a wonderful day.